Welcome back to Matt's Workshop. Today I'll cover part two of the belt grinder build. My original plan was to use two inch square steel tubing for the frame components, but I found my scrap pile to be rather depleted, so I had a change of plans. I found enough two inch by three inch rectangular ERW steel, and I think it'll work out fine. Here's an updated render from Fusion 360 showing the new design. I wanted to take a moment to better describe the belt tensioner mechanism and belt alignment hinge. Here you can see the hinge in action, able to tilt plus or minus about 5 degrees, which should be more than adequate. Remember that one of the skateboard wheels will ride on this axle. This is a close-up view showing the hinge adjusting knob passing through the pillar tube and pressing on the axle bolt to actuate the tilt of the hinge. Here you can see the vertical pillar in motion. This will travel up and down against a compression spring allowing a quick belt change and should provide enough tension on the belt but I am now also including a locking knob. It's not pictured in this view, but you'll see it later. In the wireframe view, the spring is visible, but I did not try to animate the compression with Fusion. I have a few springs on hand, but I also see McMaster Car has appropriate sized springs for just a couple of dollars. I believe between 30 and 50 pounds to compress one inch should be appropriate. Since I was in Fusion showing the motion joints, here's the extension tube. Okay, let's get on with actually cutting some material. I chose to use the old Rogers number no. 3 power hacksaw rather than the abrasive chop saw or the bandsaw. This hacksaw uses a 14 inch blade, falls vertically, and even lifts the blade on the backstroke using a cam mechanism. It sure is a pleasure to watch chew through metal and this steel tubing is no problem for this machine. Here's the type of blade I'm using and compare it to a standard Sterrett hand hacksaw blade. The power hacksaw blade has 6 teeth per inch while the little Sterrett is 24 TPI. Although there is not much information out there regarding this machine, according to information shared on VintageMachinery.org, Rogers Machinery was located in Los Angeles and later moved to Huntington Park, California. There's a patent date of 1939 related to this machine, and as far as I know, the company was out of business by the early 1960s, but I believe this machine dates to the early 40s for war production.
Now that I've cut most of the material, followed by a quick deburring with the angle grinder, I'm now on to welding fit up and squaring the material. Ended up tacking the tubes together using this little Lincoln MIG welder. I then followed up with 7018 electrodes using my Lincoln ACDC Tombstone Buzzbox welder. Eh, maybe not the prettiest welds, but they're definitely strong enough for this build. Here you see I added a plate in the frame's vertical tube for the compression spring to seat against. I added on some 3 8 16 inch nuts for clamping the knobs for both the vertical and horizontal tubes. That's about all the time I had on Saturday. As you can see the skateboard wheels arrived in the mail and next time I'll continue on the platen and wheel assembly.